If I were to take a pen and give it to a child or give it to an adult and ask him, what is the purpose of this pen? Why was it created? And whether a child or an adult, whether male or female, they will all say things along the lines of, the purpose of a pen is to write. They have a clear idea of the purpose of the pen. So why is it that when I ask, what is the purpose of your creation that mankind seem to be baffled for an answer? And there is a huge variety of responses from those who believe that life has no purpose. We are here by chance and others whose purpose of life is get rich, make money. So they spend precious moments of life night and day and at times sacrifice friends and families just to amass wealth. And for others, it is have a grand time, pub and club and party. And amidst them, a whole spectrum of other answers. It becomes very clear very quickly that mankind do not know the purpose of their creation. A object as simple as a pen has a purpose. Everything around you has a purpose. You know its purpose. So a machine as sophisticated as the human body, how can that not have a purpose? There's enough data, adequate research to show that those who live lives of purpose live better lives. They live longer lives. They live happier lives. They have better relationships. It is as though you are designed to find your purpose. And the great sadness, you don't know your purpose. Because a machine as sophisticated as this couldn't be around without purpose. Forget about the rest. Just look at the human eye. A camera, in essence, at the outside, a pupil that dilates automatically without your command to adjust to the amount of light that comes in. So when it's dark, the pupils dilate. When there's more light, they restrict. Automatic by themselves. And as soon as light passes the pupil, you have a living lens, which again adjusts by itself to ensure that it optimizes the intake of the rays that come in. So I watch the person here, or I watch the person there and instantaneously I have focus. There's no lag time between this and that. That's design. And then colors. You know, from the three main primary colors, your eyes takes that and mixes it to a million different combinations. And that is why you look around and see the glamour and beauty of life in full color. And not in the 1960s or 1970s, but since the creation of man, you had color vision. That is sophistication of design. And then the lens should have just seen a 2D image. So you have been given two eyes, two inches or so apart to give you perspective. And as the data comes in, you have a processor that synthesizes, analyzes, creates a 3D image in full color to give you a rich, crisp experience of life. That's not an accident. That is sophistication. And just look at the safety mechanisms designed to protect this eye. At the outside, at its surface, you have a film of tears, liquid, especially designed with disinfectants to neutralize any danger if it goes inside and then automatically washes it out. That is design. And outside, if the particles are any bigger that might damage your eye, the eyelids come down automatically as it senses danger coming, it shuts to protect the eye. And if the object's a little bigger than that, you've been given skeletal structure designed to protect the eye. That is why when you get punched in the eye, you get a black eye, but not necessarily a blind eye. So why were you created? And the answer, dear ones, is in the question to know that you were created. You who sit today in a place of relative success, basking in the glory of your achievements. You're 35 now. Where were you 36 years ago? Which form did you sign to come here? 
which plane did you ride to come here? You came here of no accord of your own. Someone sent you here. Someone created you. And nor do you depart of your own accord. When the time is up and the summoner summons you, young or old, you go. Through the hospital that was designed to keep you, you go. Don't you realize that someone sent you and someone summons you? And whether you are young or old, rich or poor, male or female, forget about that. Kings and monarchs get summoned and kings and monarchs leave. You have to conceive that there is a sovereign who summons sovereigns. There is a king, a creator that created, a creator that sent, a creator that summons. And when you realize that there is a creator, and then you realize that that creator out of his wisdom and majesty and kindness created a sophisticated machine as this and then herbish the world, everything around you to help your success and to help your life and to help you grow and to help you flourish. You can't but grow a sense of appreciation and a sense of awe and majesty for that Creator. That dear one is the first step towards your mission, to recognize that you have a Creator and then realize the favors that that Creator has done upon you. And in that way, grow a heart filled with love and awe and reverence and obedience and glory for that Creator. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And those who believe their greatest love is their Creator. And when a heart is filled with awe and love of its Creator, as He is worthy of that love, then out of your love, His wish becomes your command. You live a life aligned to the purpose that He created you for. And that is the purpose of your creation, to find your Lord, love your Lord, to worship your Lord. Allah Rabbul Izza says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ Jinna wal insa illa liya'budun. And we have not created the jinn nor humankind except for the exclusive purpose of the worship of the one mighty Creator. And why do you worship? So that your heart gets linked to its master, so that you're perpetually in love of the Creator perpetual remembrance of the Creator, perpetual obedience of the Creator. And if you succeed in that, dear ones, every cell in your body, from the tip of your toe to the top of your head, will synchronize and align to the greater purpose of the creation. In that you will find peace and solace, joy and comfort, happiness and prosperity. And the absence of that, you're out of alignment, you're swimming upstream, you're not meeting your purpose. Then Allah Rabbul Izzah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Whoever leaves and forsakes my guidance, my remembrance, the path that I have chosen for them, then for him will be a narrow, restricted, confined, confounded life filled with difficulty, hardship, lack of clarity, pain and suffering. And in the day of judgment, he will be resurrected blind. So he will rise up and say, Rabbi, lima hashartani a'man wa qad kuntu basira. O Lord, why did you resurrect me blind and I could once see? So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, كَذَلِكَ آتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Thus our signs were brought to you 
you chose to disregard it, you forgot about it, and thus today we forsake you, we discard you, we disregard you, we forget about you. Allah Rabbul Izzah save me and you from that. May Allah Rabbul Izzah bless you, Allah honor you, Allah exalt you, Allah protect you. 